you, my friends. Welcome to Storytime with the Met. My name is Fosefa, and I'm so glad to see all of you. We hope that you join us each week for a different story time and activity. Now, let's find a cozy spot and let's get started. Let's begin with our welcome song, just like what we did at the museum. For those of you that don't know, it goes to the tune of This Old Man. Can you count to the number three with me? Are you ready? One, two, three. Welcome friends, get ready, get set for story time with the Met, where we love to read and sing and look at works of art and picture books. We'll use our eyes to look and see. We'll use our ears to hear stories. Now let's take a seat and give a Let's begin with our first book. Round of applause, my friends. Great job singing. Our book for today is called Saturdays Are for Stella. Written by Candy Willens and illustrated by Charlie E. Ryan. Now I'm going to read the words and I'm going to need your help looking at the pictures. George Love Saturdays. Saturdays are for Stella. Sometimes George and Stella went out on Saturdays. To the park, to the dinosaur museum, and sometimes even as far as downtown. Normally, George did not like going downtown. Downtown trips without Stella meant waiting in boring offices, eating strange foods, and trying on scratchy clothes. Oh no, that doesn't sound too fun. But with Stella, George ate frozen yogurt, threw pennies in fountains, and rode on carousels. Whenever they passed a toy store, and they always passed a toy store, George went home with something fun. What do you see in George's hand? I see a toy plane. Sometimes George and St Stella stayed in on Saturdays, hosting ninja tournaments, fighting off alien attacks, and sometimes doing really unusual things too. What do you think they're doing over here? <laughs> Stella knew how to make cinnamon rolls. Mmm, yummy. Without popping open a tube. And she owned giant flat frisbees and could get them to play music. <laughs> I'm sure you could ask your grown-ups. They would know the name for that. And she never ever tired of reading George's favorite books, listening to his favorite jokes, or admiring his growing collection of bouncy balls. Mm -hmm. Do you collect anything? George kept a running list of the best things about Stella. Number one, the way her arms wrap me in the biggest best hugs when I need them the most. Number two, the way she loves doing everything with me. Number three, and also doing nothing at all. Look at that, they're snuggling. On Saturday, George woke up late. He dressed himself and packed a bag with everything he might need for a day with Stella. When he walked downstairs, he found his parents still in their pajamas. Dad's eyes were red and mom's nose was all stuffy. George kept his distance. He didn't want to catch a cold on Saturday. Saturdays were for Stella. He didn't want to get sick. But then dad explained that it wasn't a cold that made his eyes red. And mom explained why George couldn't see Stella today 
or any other Saturday. From then on, George hated Saturdays. Oh no. He tried to focus on remembering Stella, but it was hard. His parents tried to help, but carousel rides made him queasy. Cinnamon rolls tasted sad, and even his favorite jokes made him cry. So, George used a big black pen to cross out all the Saturdays on his calendar. His parents started marking their calendar too, and soon there were more trips downtown than ever before. George didn't have to eat funny foods or try on scratchy clothes, but there was plenty of waiting in boring offices. Oh no, have you ever had to wait for your grown up for a really, really long time? And though they often stopped at the toy store on the way home, George never went home with anything fun. <sighs> Just when George thought that he couldn't take another Saturday, Stella arrived. She wasn't exactly like his Stella, but there was something strangely familiar about her. Now, George doesn't have time to be sad on Saturdays. He's too busy going, going out with Stella to the park, to the dinosaur museum, and sometimes even as far as downtown. George has introduced her to the wonders of frozen yogurt, fountains, and carousel rides. Look how much fun they're having. Sometimes George and Stella stay in on Saturdays. They still have ninja tournaments and fight off alien invasions, but sometimes they throw dance parties and tea parties too. George always makes a batch of cinnamon rolls to share. That sounds like a really, really fun party. <laughs> One Saturday, George makes a list of his favorite things about Stella. Number one, the way her arms wrap me in the biggest, best hugs when I need them the most. Number two, the way she loves doing everything with me. Number three, and also doing nothing at all. George loves Saturdays. Saturdays are for Stella. Round of applause, my friends. Well done. You did a great job listening. We are going to take a look at a painting from the Met Collection. This painting is called Grandma's Treasure, and it's made by a Dutch, uh, Dutch artist. Take a look and, and let me know what you see. Can you close your eyes and pretend to step into the painting? What sounds might you hear? I see, I see a fire, maybe the fire's crackling. I see a child reading a story to her grandmother. Maybe she's reading the words really softly and calmly so that the grandma can hear. Just like Stella and George, they also love to read um, lots of their favorite books together. Take one closer look and see if you can see any other details in the painting. <laughs> All right, my friends, well, before we say goodbye, I do have a fun activity that you can do at home. Just like what George did, I want you to make a list of your favorite things to do with one of your family members or with one of your friends. Try to at least list three different things that you love about them or three different things that you like about them just like what George did. <laughs> All right, my friends. Well, thank you so much for joining. I hope you can uh, join us next week for a different story time and art activity.
Bye, my friends.